My name is Dr. Ryan Jacobs. I'm the clinical director of the lymphoma division at Levine Cancer Institute in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I uh, specialize in the treatment of CLL patients and research. In terms of a brief overview of the treatment landscape in CLL, uh, you know, in the past, uh, I would say, you know, a little less than a, a decade, we have had the fortune of having several new options approved to treat CLL patients, and uh, they, they are what I would refer to as targeted therapies, uh, small molecule inhibitors more specifically, and they've allowed us to treat CLL patients more effectively uh, and with, in general, less toxicity than we have previously been able to do with chemotherapy and chemoimmunotherapy. Uh, additionally, these treatments have been uh, easier to administer to the patients. The majority of them are uh, administered orally, uh, so that has been that's been great um, uh, to the to uh, the, pa the CLL patients too. So really, a win on on all fronts for the CLL patients in terms of more efficacious treatment that's better tolerated and easier to administer. Um, I would classify these new treatments currently, particularly those that are available in the frontline setting, as either um, targeting the BTK or Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors uh, and venetoclax or BCL2 uh, inhibitor. And within the BTK inhibitor um, realm of treatment, we have two uh, FDA-approved options, uh, Abrutinib, which was the first-in-class BTK inhibitor approved all the way back in 2014, and more recently, a Calabrutinib uh, approved in 2019. Uh, there is also a, uh, uh, an additional BTK inhibitor, Xanabrutinib, that has not yet had FDA approval, but is on the NCCM guidelines as an available uh, BTK inhibitor option. Thank you.